What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you another one. And this one is Better Call Saul Season 6, Episode 11, Prediction Theory Video. We are definitely in the end game now, and it's hard to predict <laughs> of what's going on, especially after last episode. A lot of things that happened, nobody predicted. But we're going to do our best to try to get on the good foot and try to get a few things right. There were a couple of moments in this episode that I've seen that I think predict exactly what's going to happen in the future. What up to my thugs, nerds, freaks, and geeks? You're now rocking with the best of Don Tony Teflon. If you can, please subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified every time I drop a new video. As always, 500 is the like gold. If this video hits 500 likes, I'll give a subscriber who leaves a comment on this video a $25 Amazon gift card. We hit that threshold last video. I will announce the winner in this video. And also as a special gift to you, if somehow I can reach 70,000 subscribers, I will give someone who leaves a comment on this video an Oculus Quest 2. It could happen. If half the people that watch this video subscribe, we would be there. Let's try to do it. The team at AMC have been very tight-lipped and they have not given away anything so far. In fact, these little teases that we get are exactly that. Even less than a tease is what they're giving us. So they are not trying to spoil anything whatsoever, saying that if they show something, it will give stuff away. All we know at this particular time is who wrote the episode and who's directing the episode. We have no idea what the title is or anything. So these guys are being very, very sneaky and secretive when it comes to these follow episodes. That being said, there's only three questions that need to be answered right now. Will we see Kim again? And if so, in what capacity? Will fans get that moment they've been waiting for with Walter White? And will we see Saul in his office from the Breaking Bad timeline? That is what we're trying to figure out. And that's what we need to see and how all those things will tie together. That's basically all we got left. Everything else from the Jeff storyline, wrap that story up. So we don't really need to see anything more about Gus. We don't need to see anything more about just about every other character but those. Now, let's talk about the teasers that they have given us. We have seen them use two of those teasers in this last episode. So, could they use two teasers in this episode? There are two that we did not see, and these are them. I, Kimberly Wexler, do solemnly swear that as an attorney and as a counselor of this court, I will conduct myself uprightly and according to law. I will maintain civility at all times and abstain from all offensive personality. I will never seek to mislead the judge or jury by any artifice or false statement of fact or law, and that I will support the Constitution of the United States. So there are a couple of things we could take away from this. Number one, everything that she's not supposed to do, that she claimed here, that she gave an oath that she wouldn't do, she broke all those oaths by hanging out with her husband, all right? Next, we see that this is the candle that Howard blood was splattered on and that's what made her quit being a lawyer so we could say that that's what that teaser means but since we didn't actually hear her say these words yet in the show it has to mean something else so i'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible and say that somewhere she does become a lawyer again it seems like she's taking the oath again and this time she's going to do everything that she said that she would not do. But why would she become a lawyer again? And why would that be significant to the story? Let's go to the second teaser. <laughs> I get it. You get over it, okay? Please believe me. Before you know it, you forget. So when we look at this picture, the number one thing we can see is that it's a crossroad. And an internal crossroad is when we find ourselves in need to make a change due to a conflict within ourselves. 
And I think that's exactly where Kim is at. If we could tie that back to the teaser with her saying, and it's also going to be where Jim is at. They both have to come to grips of what they did and try to move on and make it better. It seems that Kim has done that, but I don't think that Jim has yet. And if we look close, we can see that there is a car sitting there at the crossroads with no blinker on. So we can't tell which direction they're going to turn. And that's when we deal with Jimmy. We've seen him handle Jeff for one final time. We don't think that we're going to get him back. Is that his end of his crossroads? Is he done working schemes? Is he done being slipping Jimmy? Is he done with it? Was that just the final straw that he had to do to get done with that, get that out of his system, and now he can just go and face the music? And if he is at the end going to turn himself in, does that tie into Kim? Will Kim represent him and be there for him like she has always been from day one, in fact, we've heard her say those exact words before. I have been on your side since the day we met. Who comes running when you call? Who cleans up your messes? I have a job, but I drop everything for you. Every single time you confess to a felony on tape, I'm there. You have a bar hearing, I represent you. Over and over again, if you need me, I'm there. And Will she be there one last time for him to have his back to try to get him out of this situation? Doesn't mean that they're getting back together. Doesn't mean that's going to be this great happy ending. Could mean that she's just going to be there to represent him as his attorney when he turns himself in. In the end, he has to face some type of consequences, whether he goes to jail or whether he dies one or the other has to happen. And if you feel different about that, make sure you join me and fill the issues guy tonight on my channel, 7 p.m. Eastern. We will have a call in live stream. You'll be able to call in, say what you want to say live to us. Make sure you're there. So now we're going to have to see Jesse and we're going to have to see Walter White. And now that Kim is gone, with Jimmy McGill truly is kind of no more, right? He's straight soul. It's easy for them to enter the Breaking Bad timeline. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to revisit key moments from the show from the perspective of Saul. I'm excited to see them, but in all honesty, I just think it's going to be a flip like Saul was just a supporting character in Breaking Bad, and this time we're going to see Saul as the main character, and they're going to be the supporting character in his show. In the end, the true ending has to end in the Gene timeline. That's the only way we go beyond Breaking Bad. That's the only way we get to see how this thing truly plays out, and I do believe that Kim and Gene, if you want to call them that to make it easier, have to reconcile at one point. They're going to have to see each other. She's going to have to see exactly what he's became. And the only way I could see that happening is if he turns himself in and she represents him. And that is how it ends. And maybe we see her sitting at the lawyer table with him and she just grabs his hand. And that's how the show ends. I mean, if I had to think of an ending, that's what it would be. I mean, that way they can be ambiguous with does he get go to jail? Does he not go to jail? Does she get him off? They don't have to answer that question. They can leave that whole situation open ended and up to fans interpretation. Also, when you hear her say that oath, it could be a situation where the judge forces her to say it again because she's representing this dude. He's like, listen, I know you have history. We need to hear you say this again under oath to let you know that you're going to run a nice and smooth and fair defense to try to get this guy off. If they're trying to give Jimmy a happy ending similar to Jesse and Al Camino, the only way to do it is that he meets Kim 
one last time. And just for them to meet up in Nebraska, I know a lot of people think that's the way it's going to go down. Just doesn't seem fitting enough. Does he go to Nebraska and see her one last time, look through a window and look at her? I don't think that's enough consequence. Someone has to face consequences, and this is a way that that person, Jimmy, faces those consequences. He's a lawyer. It ends in the courtroom for him. And whether he gets convicted or not, they may not show. They may just show the trial beginning. I think that would be the perfect ending for the show. But you tell me what you think in the comment section. Again, join us tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Fill the issues guy, the Don Tony Teflon, and let me know. So the winner of the $25 Amazon gift card is Daniel Nugent. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for leaving a comment. I truly appreciate this. And if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, spread this across the realm. And as always, subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.